Hey, this is Mike from Animal 3D P, and today I'm going to wire up my BQ Hermit Crab. So let's go ahead and get started. So my last video, I worked on installing the hardware for the BQ Hermit Crab 2. And we have it all installed. I have it set up. I believe the belts are all run correctly. Everything's looking good. Today, I'm going to work on doing the wiring. So let's go ahead and get started with that portion of the setup. Now, I'm reviewing the directions. I'm going to be honest, they don't have anything here regarding the wiring. You're sort of on your own. I believe if we look at the install guide from the GitHub, it might be there. But the one thing I will admit is the wires are extremely well labeled. So I can sort of figure out what I need to do. This is the hot end, and because the wires are short here and I don't need much slack. Now, on the other end of the cord, the harness, I have lots of cords. There's ferrules on the end of these. And again, as you can see, these are all well labeled. Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to go over and we're going to take a look at the instructions online just to see what those look like. And then we'll proceed from there. I'll be honest, looking at these directions, I really don't find them that helpful at all. Um, part of my problem is I'm using the Manta EZ board. This is showing on an Octopus Pro. What I'm going to do is pull out the EZ. The Man Easy board instructions, and then we'll just go off those. Now I'll do a mixture of looking at the actual wiring on the board, and then we'll also look at the directions and I'll see if I can point out what I'm doing. I'm going to be honest, the looks I'm going to give you might not be perfect. And if you have any questions, please post them below. So here's the wiring diagram for the Man Easy board. Now it's a little hard to see everything here, but this should do us really well. We should be able to figure out what we need to do just from this diagram and from the wiring and the labels on the wiring we have. Now, let's switch over and take a look at the actual wiring and printer. I realize this isn't necessarily the best view, but this is what I can get. Um, now the first step before we begin the rewiring process is let's make sure everything's unplugged. So I've unplugged everything. Right now, I'm just going to start pulling out the plugs for the current extruder. And we're just going to gently pull these plugs out. And I really don't have that much more to unplug. And we just need to make sure we have everything right. Key fan. So, fan. We need to pull out the fans. And of course, we have this all tangled. So, let's see if we can get. Just this portion out. And somehow, I have all these wires crossed. So, not too good. Let's get everything back in the way. What should be plugged in, it stays plugged in. No, I unplugged X and Y end stops. So, I want to make sure I know where I want to plug those back in. So Y, it's right here. Make sure that's Y. Yeah, that's Y. And somewhere here I have X. X should be right here. Let's just check that on our drawing. Well, looks like these need to be moved over one. This is X. This is Y. 
And then let me check the drawings just to make sure I understand everything. Okay. And so these, this is the ZN stop that remains open. And then that's the RGB over here. So I think uh, besides the hot end power, that's the only thing I have left plugged in. So let's take these and undo these. So I'm undoing the power. Now, looks like I can just pull this out. Now I probably don't need to pull every single connector at once. I need to gently push this through. Now I want to keep this wire harness because I'll use that again. Was my uh, the sprite I add on here still good? I think. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to look at all this. Oops. Wi-Fi came unplugged. Plug that back in. So we have all the wires undone. And now we just need to run the wire harness through to the bottom. Now I'm using this custom case. You can look at one of my previous videos on my Ender 3 Neo Max where I set that all up. As I showed you earlier, we have the wires here that are this end, this is the end that's going to go into the bottom of the printer. So I'm going to tilt this on its side. Oops. Also going to grab the camera. So let's move the camera over. So I'm looking at the bottom of the printer. All I'm going to do is take these wires and gently I'm going to insert about half the connectors initially. There's a lot of wires in here, so I want to slowly but surely put all these in. So I'm just going to leave the wires pretty much like this. Flip the printer back down. And we can see the bundle of wires right here. And then let me aim the camera back down so we're looking at the actual wiring on the board. I apologize, this looks a little washed out. Unfortunately, in order to zoom in, it winds up looking just a little bit washed. We'll just leave that like this right now. Now, the first set of wires I'm going to plug in are the power to the hot end. And I have my screws, which I've done in the previous video. I put them as, I mark the red one as, with red Sharpie. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to insert this in the red side, tighten. Like I said, this has ferrules on it. Now let's find the black one. What did I just do with it? Oh, there it is. So now I'm going to insert the black wire in and tighten it. Both the power wires are in. And now we have all these other wires to walk at. So let's go one by one. So here is E0. So that's going to go right here on the board. Let's plug that in. We have a fan. Now the fans I'm not sure of, so I might have to rearrange these. But I'm going to put in this fan in the first fan hole uh, right down in this area. And let me bring this up on screen so you can see it. Now I've rotated my board so now it looks exactly like, like it does on in the case. So right now I'm looking at this back area here with the fans. Now I'm going to do the hot end fan as fan zero, which is the fan closest to the power. So we're going to do the hot end fan as fan zero. So I'm plugging that in. Now 
I have a blue wired fan, which is the park point fan, and I'm going to do that as fan one. I have a four line fan, but I don't know what that is. So we're not going to worry about that. I'm just looking at the rest of these wires. I believe this wire here is the BL touch. But I'm going to have to look at that, look that one up to sort of figure out how that needs to be wired. I have the thermistor, and that goes right over in here. And let me show you on the diagram where that goes. Thermistor is right in here. This is right next to the screen. So let's see. this plugged in. We have the thermistor plugged in. Now the four line fan, we'll put that aside. We have RGB. Let's look where that needs to go. That needs to go right here, is the RGB. Look at the diagram. So let's plug that in. And I don't use RGB, but we're going to plug it in because maybe I will. And then we have the four line fan. And what I believe is FLD. So we're going to need to look that up. We're going to need to look up what this connection is. So we have a couple connections here. I'm not sure what they are. So let's let me look these up and see if I can figure out where these go. The first thing I'm going to point out on the wire harness, the BL touch is not labeled. So let's start with that. Now, the directions for the wiring, according to the Hermit Crab, uses the diagram in the corner and uses the colors brown, red, yellow, black, and gray. Unfortunately, that's not the wires that are used on the wiring harness. Now, why we're not using the same wires or the same colors, I don't know. It just makes everything more confusing. Now, what I've done is I've taken the wiring diagram on the drawings, and then I've plugged in the little cable that it goes from the uh, plate onto the uh, hot end assembly. And I'm using that to figure out what's what. So what I'm finding is brown is equal to orange, red is equal to yellow, yellow is equal to green, black is equal to blue, and gray is equal to black. So again, this is making everything much more complicated, but this is one for one on how they go. And like I said, I actually had to get my notebooks and start writing notes on this to sort of figure this out. Now, this to me is not necessarily bad design, but definitely bad when it comes to the directions. Why not use in the directions the same color wires that you have on your wire harness and on these little connectors? I mean, right now, there is no wires anywhere that I could find that match the diagram. So, now, how am I going to do this? Well, let's switch over and take a look at the MANA board. Now, right now, the connection that's on the wire harness is three wires together and then two separate. I'm not sure how that's supposed to go or how I'm supposed to plug that in. To make my life easier, what I'm going to do is rewire the wire harness so that it's now equal to, so it's in a five pin connector. So I'm going to switch over and put in the CR touch or the probe wires into a five connection JST connector. 
So let's switch over. And again, these are the way the colors need to look. If you look at the little diagram here, let me switch to a full view. So it's supposed to be brown, red, yellow, black, and gray. And if we look at this diagram, we're now changing colors of the black wire as it crosses the board because black doesn't look on the board. This whole thing's giving me a headache. So this would have been a lot easier had BQ made their diagrams exactly the same colors as the wires they supply. So this is something I, I really don't like about the Hermit Crab 2, although everything else so far I've enjoyed. This is, to me, a problem. I've went ahead and wired this, and as you can see, I'm doing orange, yellow, green, blue, and then black. Hopefully I have these connections in here good enough. A little frustrated with this because, again, it's hard to wire. And everything appears to be secure. Now, we have a couple things to look at. We have the four line fan. We're not plugging that in. And then we have the FLD, which I'm not sure what that is. So now what I'm going to try to do is research this a little bit and we'll see exactly what that's supposed to be. Um, see if we can figure out where that needs to go. Now, in order to figure out what the FLD is, I've had to pull up the instructions and in the manual for the Octopus Pro. So here is the FLD wires on the, on the Hermit Crab. If I go over here, it looks like down in here are end stops. This diagram, we could see it a little bit better. So it looks like we're plugging this into the end stop. So I'm assuming the FLD is if I had an end stop up on my tool head. I don't have an, I'm not using an end stop, so I'm not going to worry about that. So we're going to leave two wires unplugged. We're going to leave the four line fan unplugged. And we're also going to leave unplugged the FLD. And as far as I can tell, the FLD looks like it's for when you have an end stop up near the probe. I'm thinking everything's wired. So what I'm going to try to do is tuck all this back in, and then we'll plug everything in up the tool head. So let me rearrange my wires and my camera views, and then we'll get back to it. Now I'm switching over to doing the wiring on the tool head. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my wires and run this behind here. I've already wired this up sort of once with the wires in the front of the printer. I want them to come into the back. So I have a twist tie in the back here. Now I'm going to try to separate the wires that don't have a connector. So as you can see, I'm pulling those all to one side. Those are all going to go in here. Now, here is my BL touch. BL touch goes in behind the power. Yeah, so that's plugged in. Now I'm going to do all these that are behind the power. The FLD is right here on the far right hand side in the back. So plug that. RGB is right next to that, again, in the back. Plug in everything that's in, towards the back of the printer in first. Now, four line fan is right here in the front. I'm going to plug that in just so I don't have anything flopping around near the tool head. And I have the motor here, E0. It's going to go right in here. And then lastly, I have to put in the wires across here. So now I've got a couple small problems here because these are not labeled. So we've got to go by wire thickness. So these wires are the thickest. So those are going to be the hot end. 
and I'm going to plug those in on the far left, and those are going to be black and then red. And so let me get my screwdriver. I want to loosen this up right here. Now I've put ferrules on these in the past and it doesn't work well. So we're going to try without. So we're I'm doing these wires based on thickness. I wish these were labeled, but I'm sure the labels would pop off. So we're doing black and then red. And let's tighten these in. So those are tightened in. Now I'm doing the thinner black and red wires. And that's going to be black and then red. And I've started from the left, working my way to the right. Putting the black wire in first. Make sure I have it secure. Then I'm going to do the red wire. And let's see if I I feel like I have this down there right, but oh, that's all right. Okay. Next, we have the blue and yellow wire, which represent the part cooling fan. And that's going to be blue and then yellow. Now, if I was smarter, I would have raised the gantry up so I wasn't bent over like I am. Now, the last two wires are the thermistor wires. Those are actually fairly simple. I just need to plug those in any which way. Let's get one in. And then let's go ahead and get the other in. Okay, I just want to make sure all those are tight. Everything looks tight, and I'll probably need to do some wire strain here. Just the way the plate goes. That's all feeling tight. So that's looking good. This comes out real easy. And this is all totally wired. Now I'm going to pause here and make another video where I wire up the actual plate with a motor with the hot end and the probe and all that good stuff. Again, keep these videos short and sweet. So if you have any questions or comments, please post below. Thank you for sticking with me today. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.